Good evening all, and welcome. Video games can certainly be entertaining. However, there are always those on the other side who might have dark intentions indeed. You never know who you are truly playing with. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I have played World of Warcraft since its release, and up until two years ago when my first daughter was born. I met my husband because of the game, and had two babies. That game saved me from the cruel reality that I was forced to endure at the hands of my father. I was safe in this virtual world, away from his sick perversion and harsh words and actions. I love to raid a lot, I mean religiously. And as a 16 year old girl playing a game dominated by men, I got a lot of attention. 90% of it being negative. This is one of those, although I didn't think so at first. My guild and I were raiding, and our main tank was sick, so we were low for a body for Nax. We found a new tanker from a sister guild and began our raid night. I was a healer and was assigned to said new tank. He was super nice, very talkative, and we talked a lot that night, even long after the raid had ended. We even went so far as to exchange MySpace and email. His name in game was Razor, so that's what I always called him. My name in game was Chastity, so that's what he called me. We didn't use real names, and I'm so very glad that never happened. We spoke for ages, and I was thrilled to discover he lived not 25 minutes away. Now seeing as how I was a 16 year old girl, I posted way too much information on MySpace. Razor and I spoke for weeks and weeks, and he was so nice and even helped me through a tough breakup. We talked on the phone until the wee hours of the morning, and he listened to me cry and offered kind advice to a very lonely, stupid teenage girl. Keep in mind, he said he was 27 at the time. Looking back at this now, I realize how creepy it was becoming a lot earlier than I noticed it back then. He started flirting, and I must admit I flirted back too. But then he got sexual, and as a 16 year old girl, I lived for attention. Then his emails got slightly violent. One incident in particular I remember was an email he sent where he told me in graphic detail how much he would like to have me. And stupidly, even after reading that, I still spoke to him. It was extremely graphic. One day after walking my dog through the park, I returned home to the phone ringing off the hook. No one was home, which was normal as both my parents worked a lot. I answered it and it was him. The first thing he said was, I saw you today. You're so cute. He described my dog, everything, what I was wearing and even my makeup. Uh, why didn't you say hi? Oh, I didn't want to scare you. You know me, if you saw me, I have a lot of scars, mostly on my neck. Even back then in my stupidity, I started to get scared. Yeah, from what? From glass. All I remember him next saying was, Can I come in? I slammed the phone down, and grabbed two of the biggest knives in the kitchen. I grabbed my dog, a 200 pound St. Bernard and hauled her into my room. I barricaded my door and heard someone pounding the front door. The pounding continued for what seemed like hours until it got dark. I jumped at every single noise I heard until my mum got home. I never answered any more of his phone calls or emails after that, though he sent tons and emailed me several hundred times a day. I'm so glad I never opened that door. It was Friday night. My weekend had just begun. I was on Xbox Live and playing Overwatch and eating now cold pizza, like lots of my friends were. I was kicking considerable ass more than I usually would at this game, and was on fire. For non Overwatch players, that basically means you're doing really good. At around 2am, I decided to step up my game and go into competitive mode. I got into a match at King's Row and I was playing Pharaoh on defense. 
I got a 15 player kill streak, but noticed five of these kills were on the same guy, a Bastion. I remember his username. The match goes on for another minute, and then I get an invite to a party. The gamer tag was the same as the Bastion I had killed for the sixth time. I wasn't in a party, since all my friends had called it a night except for me at that point. I decide that whatever he wanted to say could be interesting, so I added him. Now I usually expect some kids a few years younger than me to be talking slack, but to my surprise it was a grown man on the other end. More to my surprise, he sounded in his 30s rather than close to my age, and he had a thick Spanish accent. Immediately this guy starts cussing me out. I can't lie when I say I half expected this to happen when I got a party invite. Now I have the mentality that when you're a jerk to me, I'll return the favor and replied with the classic, oh, you mad bro. The guy doesn't acknowledge what I say. Instead, he starts raging on me and saying how he's going to do terrible things to my entire family. Some of the things he said sort of shocked me, but I was just like, bro, take a chill pill. No, I don't want. And then he stopped. I noticed why. ADVA on our team had just killed his bastion hero again. Now this is where things get scary. It sounded as if he turned into a rabid animal that was trying to suffocate itself in the mic, screaming, howling and spitting. It's difficult to describe exactly what sound he was making. Inhumane noises were coming from the other end of the mic, as if he were being gutted and possessed by a demon at the same time. It was a grown man, which made the entire thing scary compared to laughing my butt off when a 12 year old loses it. The match ended, the enemy team didn't even get payload moving, and the man loses his mind. I decided to be an ass again, and not take this guy's crap. Look, it's not my fault you're not good at the game. You're just being treated like a child. Grow up, man. The Spanish guy didn't like this. He screamed down the microphone for 20 seconds. It started getting all crackly. He then removed me from the party. And since the match was over, I called it a night. My overall reaction to what went down was, well, that was something. I logged out, turned off my Xbox and went to bed. As soon as my head hit the pillow, I realized how much of a dumbass I was for not recording it for my friends. They would have lost it when they heard it. Then I fell asleep. Saturday went by with nothing. And I thought that was that with the angry Spaniard. The next day I logged into my Xbox to play more Overwatch and noticed I had a message from the guy. Good morning. Good morning, Johnny. I know you have to go to the movie theater down in Ashford tomorrow. What the hell? I said out loud. I decided to pull out my phone and take a picture of the TV screen. I then texted my boss about it and told her that some guy on Xbox somehow found out where I worked. Now my boss is a mean old lady, so she naturally didn't care about what happened on Xbox, even though it concerned my work. She just blew it off and told me I still had to come into work the next day. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and The Incredibles 2 were both hot then, and it was going to be busy. I ended up coming in next day at 5.30. It was pretty boring and busy like I predicted. Up until around 8, when a super short guy came in through the door. It was loud and crowded, but the guy hollered my full name. Some thick Spanish accent. The same one from Xbox. It was him. I still to this day don't know where he got my info from or why he decided to come all the way out to where I worked. The theater fell silent. I just walked to the back room where my boss was and told her that the guy from Xbox was inside. She repeated, I don't care what happens to you on Xbox, get to work, we're busy. I repeated to her that the guy was inside the building. I didn't know if he wanted to hurt me or not, and that I was going to call the cops. I called them, and it wasn't until they arrived and spoke to me privately in the back room that my boss ended up taking me seriously. 
The Spanish guy was still inside the lobby, and the cops put him in cuffs and walked him out. This is according to my boss, as I was in the back room and couldn't witness it. I still haven't heard anything from them, and I still don't know how he found my information or why he came all the way to where I worked, and I still don't know what he planned to do to me. Either way, I'm still a bit shaken up over it. I don't know if he knows my home address or not, and I'm pretty much on guard 24-7. Either way, I own two dogs that can scare anyone off, but I'm still pretty terrified of this guy. I contacted my police department a little later, and heard they had taken the guy on Monday, so I have the satisfaction knowing that he didn't get away. They're still being stingy on the info and won't even tell me his name because of all the security garbage. I'm waiting for a full report on this guy. They promised they would give me one soon. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but I'm just gonna try and not focus on that guy for now. So insane, pissed off guy from Xbox Live that stalks teenagers and visits them? I hope I never have to meet you again. This happened a few months ago. I had just gotten Red Dead Redemption. And while I was playing online, I met this awesome guy named Rick. He's in his 50s, a retired firefighter, and we played together a while. Helping me level up so that people wouldn't target a low level player who is also a girl. After a while, he introduces me to this guy named Black Wolf Angel or something like that. He seemed pretty cool at first, this new guy. We would hang out on RDR, shoot lots of bandits, and do gang hideouts. After a while, we became somewhat good friends, and he then started to lightly flirt with me every once in a while. I let it slide, being the kind person I am, and I made it my goal to not get a so-called Xbox boyfriend, so I tended to avoid flirting on there. We would normally hang in parties or with Rick, but one time he invited me to a party and I'm like, oh okay, he and Rick wanna play, but I was dead wrong. He began to flirt super heavily with me, and I acted like I had to go and I left. For weeks, he would spam me with party invites and messages saying, Hey sexy, I really want you. It finally got to the point where I was sick of him. So when he invited me the last time, I answered and he started with the usual flirting. And I just said, Look man, I'm not interested in any kind of relationship right now, so please lay it off. He agreed and stopped for a few days. But then he broke the silence by sending me a message saying, I'm thinking of ending it all because of you. I flipped out on him and started to cuss him out and tell him to never contact me again. I told Rick about it all, and he told me he stopped talking to him a few days ago for the same reason. So for a while, everything was cool. But then I started to get phone calls and text messages saying the same stuff he used to say. I answered one said call and told him to leave me alone or I'll get the police. Thankfully, he stopped after that. So to the guy from Xbox Live, let's never meet again. You creep. When Pokemon Go first came out, I couldn't keep up with my then girlfriend, now wife, at all. I'd spend hours walking around town and somehow she'd always managed to outlevel me. So the only way I figured I'd get ahead would be to sacrifice my precious sleep and traverse and rough the tumbled streets of downtown Salt Lake City until the wee hours of the morning. And with that, my journey to become a true Pokemon master began. I started staying out until one or two in the morning, five nights a week, since my work didn't start till around 10, and I felt I had enough time to recoup. And it worked great. Not only did I get ahead of her, but I developed a massive lead, made some friends, and even dropped about 12 pounds as well. Was working great, mostly. For anyone who doesn't know Salt Lake City, it has a pretty big problem with homeless people. A good number of them strung out on drugs or violently mentally ill. This isn't stereotyping, it's just a pretty well-documented fact, both statistically and from my own experience. 
It's gotten somewhat better since the state stepped in to clean up downtown. But at the same time, they were filtering up into the nicer areas of the city at night and setting up camp or accosting people playing alone. As a result, I brought several knives which I would carry on me, one in my bag and one where most people hold a wallet, one in my pocket and yet another on my belt loop. I know it might have been overkill, but I wanted to be prepared for any situation. After all, I didn't need to win a fight, I just needed to make going after me not worth their time. And after getting sized up by a rather surly looking group, when I had stopped to use a public bathroom by the state capital, I decided it would be better to stock up than to be under geared. Thankfully, I've never had to do anything with them. But I have had to brandish it on more than one occasion. One night I'm walking back from the hill leading up to the capital, when I see a guy on the same sidewalk a ways off heading in the opposite direction. At first glance, he seems harmless. But then I see him start twitching his shoulders uncontrollably, and realize he's probably tweaking right now. As he approaches, I can hear him talking to himself, nothing intelligible. But I think I at least heard him say something about kangaroos are controlled by Interpol. I'd been focusing on listening to him and hadn't noticed that he'd realized I was there. He began to walk towards me with that sort of purposeful stride that you have when homing in on someone. He was still probably half a block away, and I needed to cross anyway. So I figured that were a good time as any to part company. As soon as I'd stepped away and put my feet into the road, he follows suit and picks up the pace, making a beeline right for me. I unfasten it from my belt loop and palm it just in case. He's still shambling towards me, and I realize I've got one last chance to get out of this without conflict. When he's no more than 10 feet away, I flick it out, casually brandishing it to my side and there's just enough light on me to make out that I'm armed. The guy stops in his tracks and just walks back to his side of the road as I continue my walk to the throng of people gathered at a small park with four stops or lured up in the hope for a Dragonite spawn. Sadly, that sort of dedication following such a creepy encounter didn't endear me to the gods of Pokemon Go enough to grant me one that entire summer. I freely admit that I could have been completely wrong about his intentions, but I wasn't willing to take the risk. Thankfully, I've never had another run in like that again, even on subsequent nights when I went out binge playing until the deep freeze of winter arrived. I've had some really weird encounters with homeless people, including an overly aggressive panhandler who tried to come inside my apartment and someone who thought walking in front of my car at a green light to keep me from going so he could beg for a ride to court, and I'm not joking with this, was good. But nothing where I actually felt my life was in danger like that night. In fact, my back crap insane stalker ex scared me more than the homeless do. However, that's an entirely different story for another day. So, crazy guy, let's not meet again. I moved in with my dad around the age of 11. And to help keep in contact with my brother, my dad helped me create an Xbox Live account. I made plenty of friends on Halo 3, Left 4 and Dead 2, and Resident Evil 5. And I had an amazing group of people that I am still friends with to this day. The group I made were much older than me with a few exceptions. Some of their kids were also friends a part of this group, and one of them is actually a day older than me, so he and I became rather close. Overall, I made a lot of amazing memories with these people, but there was one problem. About a year or two into being involved with these people, a random person randomly rejoins the group. The person was a friend with one of them before, and the others were acquainted as well, but they barely knew them. I've never been great at making friends as I'm quite awkward and say a lot of weird things that makes people cringe in desperation, but I am nice and friendly. I added this mysterious person, but I was rather distant as they didn't have a mic. 
and this person was also pretending to be a woman. When Halo Reach came out, every single one of us was on that game. We practically dominated SWAT, and this person would join in often. Communication was obviously limited because they lacked a mic, but it made it easier for them to pretend to be female. Now I do have a fairly deep voice myself, so a lot of people even now still think I'm a boy when I'm playing online. So my instant thought was that maybe this person was just self conscious over how they sounded, and just couldn't afford a mic perhaps. One morning, this person and I are both online. Everyone else was either still sleeping or at work, and it was a weekday. This person and I began messaging each other back and forth. It was pleasant conversation at first, which then turned dark. Mind you, this person was well aware that I was young and inexperienced in life. They began sending me sexually explicit messages, asking them to show me my 13 year old breasts. At that moment, I blocked the person, my buddy, who introduced me to the group and is well into his 30s gets online and I tell him everything. It's obviously a little odd for such a young person to be friends with several people a few decades older than themselves, but they all treated me like a little sister. And this became evident when I told my friends what happened. He immediately got defensive and starts messaging the mysterious man that was no longer allowed to join our group, as what he did was disgusting. As everyone in our group began signing on and joining the conversation, we put the pieces together and realized that number one, this person was a creep, two, a liar, and three, a man. They lied about not having a mic and was caught with a mic at a few points during their time with the group. The person speaking was apparently male and then lied about it, saying that the person speaking was her brother. There was plenty of other proof people offered up but that one was one of the main ones I remember. This happened when I was young. My best friend and I were both obsessed with Pokemon Gold and Silver. We would spend our weekends at each other's houses battling and trading all day until we were called home or got mad at each other after a particularly rage filled battle. Our neighborhood was pretty small and the two streets connecting our houses created an L shape with her house at the top corner of the L and mine at the bottom right. Her street led downhill to my street and my street was flat. This will come back to play later. It was a mobile park home and at the time it was safe for kids to walk through the neighborhood alone. But since then it's gotten bad. This particular afternoon, I was walking back to my house with my pink Game Boy Color and link cable in hand, probably really stoked to get back home and continue playing. I didn't even notice a man crossing the street and walking quickly in my direction. Thinking back, this guy was probably in his late slash early 20s. And at the time, though being a little girl who was small for her age, I remember thinking that he was a grown adult and that maybe my dad's age and I was raised to always respect people older than me. So I stopped to smile at him. He smiled really sweetly at me. And when he was standing in front of me, he said, I really like your headband. You look like that girl from that movie. Now for reference, when I was in elementary school, I looked like the splitting image of Matilda, but with glasses. I always wore these 90s headbands and bangs. I secretly loved being compared to her because I really liked that movie. Thanks, Matilda's one of my favorite movies, I said, and started to take a step again, but the guy shifted his weight, moving in my direction. Oh, you have a Game Boy. What are you playing? Pokemon Silver, I said to him. His face lit up and he stepped closer. Oh, how many gym badges do you have? I know a secret to how to get them all and the hidden ones. For some reason, I felt inferior all of a sudden, because I had just made it to the Kanto region, which is the second half of the game. And having all of the badges sounded really cool. And hidden ones? This guy sounded amazing. It makes me sick thinking how naive I was. But I didn't say anything. And he said, I could show you. I remember looking up at him, and he was staring hard into my eyes, the most intense stare I'd ever seen. Okay, 
I said almost immediately. Oh, but he looked down at his watch and sighed. I can't right now, I have to go. But would you be able to come back here at 10.30? I can show you how to do it then. Can you sneak out? That's when the alarm bells in my head started to ring. Come out after dark? Sneak out? I don't even know this guy's name. Stranger danger flashed behind my eyes, and he must have seen it because he said, It's okay. I'm a friend. My friend will be there too. He's your age. I'm going to show him how to get the badges too. Maybe you two can battle. I remember saying okay to him, but my mind was racing. I was raised to be polite and didn't know how to say no and just walk the hell away. I did know that there was no way I was going to meet this guy after dark. He grinned and started saying bye with his hands in his pockets. He backed away. Okay, cool. We'll meet right here at 10.30. Bye. He turned around and walked across the street again and up the hill. I continued walking down the street until I turned onto mine, glancing back. The guy was watching me and was back on the side of the street where we were on before. I walked quickly down my street and when I was almost home, I looked back again. Sure enough, the guy was on my street. Though he was in a neighbor's yard, silently standing behind a big lilac bush they had. I was terrified at this point. He was following me, trying to see which house is mine. What do I do? I kept walking until I just randomly booked it through a neighbor's yard, and I ran uphill through yards until I made it all the way across back to my friend's backyard. I wasn't going to try and go back in, but I was afraid to lead the creep to my friend. Her parents weren't home, so what could we do? I didn't see him, but I did hear what sounded like someone running on grass. It may not have been him, but I ran downhill again, making a beeline to my house. I never looked back, and I ran inside and slammed the door. I don't remember what I told my parents, but I remember that I was scared and would get in trouble for talking to strangers. So I made up some lie about why I was running and went into my room. I didn't sleep that night. I was terrified he would show up at my window and break in. After that, I think my parents either knew something was wrong, or maybe there were other kids in the area being talked to by him, because I never walked the friend's house alone after that. My mum either walked me, or my friend and I met at the middle point of our streets and walked each other back to the middle. I don't know if the guy was just trying to find a way to steal my Game Boy, or if he was planning on something else. But I'm glad we never met again. I take the bus to my work, and the bus drops me off about 15 minutes walking distance. I play Pokemon Go, and intended to walk to some of the poker stops that are on the way to my work. I got off the bus, and a couple of people get off as well, including this one older man who's about 65. I started walking on autopilot to the sidewalk next to the road, but then remembered the poker stops and pivoted around and switched my direction by 90 degrees. This old man who had been walking behind me got in the same direction that I was in and noticed that I started going the other way and immediately changed his direction as well and started following behind me. I turned into the small strip mall that hosted the poker stops. I wanted to go and see the first one, so I walk up to it and stop and chill for a few minutes, collecting stuff from the stop and catching a couple of people that had popped up. He passed me, acting like he was going about his business, but then stops in front of a store 30 feet away from where I was standing and begins looking at the window. Keep in mind, all of these stores are closed at this point. It's 6am. He has no phone in hand, so I know he's not playing the game either. And he keeps glancing back at me as I keep my eye on him. He eventually walks off and disappears around the corner as the whole strip mall was curved so it was easy for him to vanish from my vision. I walked in the direction he went in to get to the next poker stop, and I pass a wall on my right. As I pass the wall, he sees me and starts following me again. I'm pretty weirded out at this point. I don't stop at any more poker stops and just keep walking to collect the items from them as I pass. All the while, he's following behind me. 
and I was worried that I was just being overly paranoid and decided to test to see whether he's following me or not. I stop at the last stop at the mall and dilly dally on my phone for a few. And then he does the same thing where he waits for me and starts following me again as I pass. I give him a dirty look when I look behind me and then speed walk to an office complex that was across the street from my job as I didn't want him to know where I worked. I sat down at these secluded benches they have in front of them where a poker stop was at. I never saw him again after that. But when I get off the bus tomorrow, I'm definitely going to be filming if he does it again. What should I do if he repeats this? All I know is that I don't want to meet me again. I was playing Pokemon Go last night during an event. And like an idiot, I walked into a park by myself in the dark. There were a few late night dog walkers and people around there when I arrived. So I thought it was fine. But by the time I got all the Pokemon in the area, everyone that was around there had left and I was all alone in the dark. So it was about then when I was like, okay, something's gonna happen to me out here. It's time to leave. And boy, am I glad I did. As I get about halfway down the driveway, a car passed at full speed, turns around at the dead end of the park and then drives back past me. I was a little spooked because I was very aware of how easy a victim I am right now, but maybe they were just lost. As I continue walking and catching things, while I walk, the car drives past me three more times. There's nothing down this road except the car park and the park and myself. So now I'm thoroughly spooked. The fourth and fifth time they drive past, they slow down right next to me and then zoom off again around a corner. In a moment of sheer panic, I ran to a nearby parked car, dove underneath it and lay still. Lo and behold, the car comes back around and slows down in the spot where I was before. A car door opens and a guy gets out, walks around for a bit and then swears, gets back into his car and then drives away faster than before. I laid under that car for ages before I ran home via a well lit road. Although I've definitely learned not to wander around by myself at night anymore, I have no idea who the creepy guy was in the car and I'd rather never find out. This happened a week ago. I was sitting in the living room, crocheting. I was out there with my mother watching cooking shows when she left for a bit. I was sitting quietly, just focusing on my craft when I heard something strange. Loud 8-bit music. I thought for a second it was my cell phone, but when I checked, nothing. I went around the room, even listened closely to my laptop that I had the crocheting pattern on just in case it was a pop-up ad. Nothing. I eventually made it to my room and the music is getting louder. I go over to this container that I had a bunch of miniature things in. Inside I find my old Game Boy Pocket Edition, one of those really tiny ones with preloaded games and you couldn't change the cartridge. It had an alarm going off. I never set an alarm and I hadn't turned this device on since I was 10. I got it in 2006. At the time, the calendar was chronologically correct, reading off 2006 when I got it. However, instead of reading 2019, it now read February 7th, 1998. I was born on February 7th, 1996. The date of this strange alarm was my second birthday. It was one of the strangest things I have ever experienced in recent months. How peculiar. Seven years ago, I was a preteen, a 12 year old girl, and was really into the world of Warcraft, like really into it. I would wake up at 4am and play until I had school and then play until I had to sleep. During summer break, I would play all day every day. So when I was 13, I joined a guild that seemed to have a lot of chill people, just into achievement hunting, pug runs, and would help with quests for the lower levels. There was this one man called Bear, and he would start messaging me all the time, getting me to go on vent all the time. 
Of course, I was a naive 13 year old girl and thought this was okay and kind of exciting. So we would talk a lot and eventually I added him to a secondary Facebook account I made specifically for him, which didn't have my address or anything. There were a few pictures of me and he would comment on them and call me beautiful and such. After creeping through his profile, I realized he looked a lot older than me. And having never asked him his age before, I finally and nonchalantly bring it up. Bear with zero shame admits he's double my age at 26. I don't really know what to do. So I just act like it's all fine. And he starts getting creepy on me right after I asked his age. Every time he asked me to go on vent, he began dirty talking me. And I don't mean lovely seduction stuff. I mean, like, have you ever had someone lick you all the way up your spine? I'd love to be your first and creepy stuff like that. I never said anything more than Oh, back. And he always took that as I was shy and uneducated. And I let him believe that this went on for several months. And he would just send half naked pictures to my Facebook account and got creepier by the day. I left the guild and blocked him on everything. When he said he had a surprise for me. And upon asking what it was figuring it would be a cool mount or companion. He said he was saving up money and gonna fly to me. He knew which province I lived in Canada and he was in the States without me telling him and he was going to come take me away and make me feel things I'd never felt before. I haven't heard from him since deleted my Facebook account and switch servers. But to this day, I'm always keeping my eye out for that creep since I don't know if he still has it in his head to try and steal me away. Considering he narrowed down my whereabouts, he could probably do much more. I hope to never meet him. I was in our local park playing Harry Potter Wizards Unite. It's a good place because there are four stops that give you energy. So I just go back and forth while playing. It is insanely hot outside. So there is just me some people with their kids on the playground, which is a bit off behind the trees so they can't see or hear me and some guy wandering around like I do but without a phone. I go around playing my game and not thinking anything of it. He was probably just waiting for someone. He like me goes from shadow to shadow because the sun is just too hot. I sit on a bench for a while. And while playing, I see him behind some of the houses in the park. It's an old cultural park with an old windmill and such. And these houses host private events sometimes. There is a tight space between these with bushes and train tracks behind and beneath. The most exciting thing back there is heart shaped confetti and garbage. I go here every day. I know that the guy gets closer and sits beneath a tree just besides me. He sits there for a while and then says something. I push my earphones aside and ask him what he said. He was just trying to make small talk and didn't speak much of my language as we have tons of immigrants and he was very obviously one of them. It was clear he didn't understand what I said. I just play on and sit quietly for a while. I get up, go 20 meters forward to reach a stop. When I turn around to go back, he's right behind me. He then follows me back to the houses and asks my name and if I live alone and if I'm married. I do. But of course, I tell him I live with my boyfriend. He then points to the back of the houses and wants to show me something. I tell him no. And he grabs my wrist real hard and begins to pull. I resist and he thankfully let go. I just keep on babbling that there's nothing too interesting there. There's just tracks and bushes. I find this all really creepy. And I'm being too polite. I start walking out of the park and he followed me. He walked besides me like we were friends. In the beginning, I think it's just a cultural thing. But we are extremely rigid and hate talking to strangers. But they often seem to like it and can be very friendly. I can be polite and sociable if I have to. But this is pushing my buttons and is way too creepy. I live right near the park and he's still here right beside me not saying much, but obviously going with me. I decide to go to my boyfriend's house. And that were the longest 10 minutes of my life. He occasionally asks more questions. Do I live in a house stuff like that? 
and I keep on playing my game, pretending to be somewhat in my own world. When we're almost at the neighborhood my boyfriend has his house in, I cross the road to get there. He misses it and keeps going forward. And when he sees that, I just wave, bye. I walk a bit further, but then he crosses the road through traffic. I thought I'd lost him. He goes in front of me and turns right and walks away, like the goodbye stuck. I try to walk calmly round the houses where my boyfriend lives, but I just want to run and I unlock the door and rush in. My boyfriend comes downstairs and wonders what I'm doing there so early, so I just throw myself in his arms. I had him walk me home and then call the cops. I didn't think there was much they could do. I have no idea who this person is or what his name was or what he wanted, but at least it's on paper now in case anything else happens. I remember when I spoke to the cops, I said that he was not already in the park when I got there and that he walked past me when I arrived because I stopped to get the stops in the game. That meant he came from the same street I did, which also leads to my real house, which is, as I said, super close. I'm just hoping he didn't see me exit. I know nothing happened, but it was really creepy. I don't want to stop going to my local park, but he's really made me feel uncomfortable. I think I'll stay inside today. I was walking to the store at about 10 PM. I left my house to walk onto the empty sidewalk, and I hardly saw any cars in the street. As I was walking up ahead, I saw a car with headlights on, but I didn't see anyone in or around it. The door to the driver and passenger seats were open. I noped out and decided I wanted to take the shortcut instead, which was to hop over this alley wall instead to get there faster. I didn't want to walk on the same street as the ghost car. So I jumped over the wall via these pile of bricks and I find myself at the back of this building leading to the parking lot. I walk over to the side of the building to head over to the store where I'm planning to buy some snacks. So as I'm walking, I turn on Pokemon Go because I realized there were nearby stops. So I pulled my phone out, catch a few Pokemon, get a few eggs and the like. Afterwards, I put my phone away and as I'm getting close to the store, this car comes off the road, pulling into the parking lot and drives right by me. The driver looks at me and I look at him. He looks like an older guy with gray hair, mid fifties. You want to get some action? If I didn't specify already, I'm a guy. I got scared as hell. It was so random and such a weird question. I replied with a firm, no. Right after I said that, he suddenly drives off the street away from me, all the way down the freeway. I then run back to my house from a different route to be safe. That was one of the weirdest, strangest, and creepiest encounters I've had to date. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed Tonight's story, something a little bit different. We haven't had video game stories in a very long time indeed. If you liked today's video, don't forget to let me know by commenting down below. And why not subscribe and all that stuff while you're at it. Also, a huge thank you as always to my lovely and incredible patrons. Your support really does mean a lot. If you would like your name on screen, consider signing up to my Patreon. It really does mean a lot and helps me out considerably. Thanks guys. All right then, but for now I'm gonna sign off. Stay awesome and I'll see you.